Oh, hey, Tom, thank you so much for being the first guest here on the Jat Show. I am so. You, thank you for the fancy water. <laughs> are you enjoying yourself? I'm having a good you know, time. You got some I'm deciding on shirts. Yeah. Bluey or, you know, go total, I don't know. That's but very Johnny Cash. I'm going Johnny Cash. I think. Go Johnny. Hey, I thought it'd be great if we did like a, a, a pre show bit, like a kind of opening okay. for the opening what, of the uh, show. Like and uh, so I thought if we. A pre show bit. Yeah, if you right had now. something. Sketch. Yeah, something. I don't know. Do you have anything? No. Okay. Um, um, what if we did like a selfie and we then we can fight? Can put it... oh. No, see, I don't like. I, I don't like. I, I don't on. like the fight. No, no, no. Uh, what if we did a selfie? We just do okay. a selfie, then you Social can put it on media. Your and I'll selfie. Selfie. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. So we're gonna. Um, okay. So let me let me turn it around, and we'll do. That actually didn't. No, that didn't work. Oh, good. You wanna you wanna try it? Okay. I think we need no. to go farther back. You need to go farther back. No, that didn't work. One, two, three. That's a little blurry. You can just do my left. 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 No, this feels on. weird. Come on. All right. See? Yeah. And it's cute too. It's yeah. What would you like for Christmas? <laughs> I'm really uncomfortable. <laughs> okay. Well. All right. Thanks. Well, all right. We'll see you in a bit. Pre-recorded and edited in a little padded room in beautiful La La Land, California at Jet Studios for your anytime online YouTube viewing enjoyment. It's The Jet Show! Starring James Arnold Taylor. Featuring music by The Jet Show Trio with Jet, Jet, and Jet! Yeah! And me, your trusty, smooth-talking, slick-looking, cold-copy-reading announcer, Jet. Join James and his special guest, actor, comedian, musician, writer, artist, jeez, what doesn't this guy do? Tom Wilson! Now, here he is, the same guy that's doing this introduction, because there ain't no room in the budget for one of them fancy in-a-world trailer voiceover guys! Hey, thank you so much. Uh, me? Uh, yeah. And welcome all of you to the Jat Show. I am Jat, James Arnold Taylor. It's the first episode of the show and man, am I excited. You know, I've been putting all this together in my free time over the last year now and I gotta tell you, it's not easy building a video production from scratch on your own, but I really can't take full credit. I did have some help here. I mean, let's, let me break out the old Jat cam and show you who all is here in the room with me, huh? Okay, let's see. We got um, James over there on live. Hey. Uh, then there's James over hey. on camera one. Camera two is, uh, oh, James, yeah. Come camera on. three, it's hey. James. And operating sound is, oh, hey, James. Hey, so, hey, you can see it's a really small but efficient group we have here. So, now what can you expect from the Jat show? Well, I hope to bring you fun and informative interviews with my friends in the world of showbiz. And please let me know if there's a specific guest you'd like to see, or if you have questions for me or my guest, you can either send me a tweet on the Twitters with the hashtag Jat Show, or you can go to my website, jamesarnoldtaylor.com, click on the Jat Show link, and then submit your questions, comments, etc. Just make sure you use the drop down menu when it says choose topic, choose a topic, specify exactly what you're there for. If you don't, it doesn't get put into the system correctly, and then. Ah! Yeah. Okay, so uh, jamesarnoldtaylor.com, click the Jat Show link and choose a topic. You know, I personally love the old late night shows like Letterman and Johnny Carson. I grew up with them. I also love the old variety shows of the 70s. So I'm gonna do my best to give you a little flavor of that here at the Jat Show. Take you to a time long since past where it was really just about the guests coming on, having a good time, and you hopefully learning a little bit more about them than you would anywhere else. But you know, this is a new time and generation, so I'll do my best to make it all work within the confines of the YouTube Watcher. In fact, for those of you that really want to experience the Jat Show in the truest sense, you can now get the Jat Show Home Edition and play along with all of us there at home with your family and friends. It's gonna be a lot of fun. In fact, hey, James, what do we have for them? Well, James, some members of our studio audience will receive a year's supply of Jat Show topical ointment for minutes of soothing relief. Jat Show ointment. Use only as directed. Okay, but yeah, we don't, we don't actually have a studio audience, do we? Ooh, uh, no, no, we don't. Ooh, oh, 
Okay, James. Be careful with that. You don't want to hurt yourself there, huh? Remember, I warned you. <laughs> Okay. Well, uh, boy, do we have an amazing first, best, well, only guest. And uh, he's a fantastically talented actor. He's a comedian, a musician, an author, an artist. He even has his own YouTube channel where you can keep up with him. He is truly one of my favorite people in the world. Jat Show YouTubers, please welcome my dear friend, Mr. Tom Wilson. Yes. Coming up, oh, it's hey. me. Wow. Tom. What the heck? Going on that. to the Jack oh, Show. Here you are. Uh, here, wow. See? Hey, there he everybody. Is. Yeah. All I right. told you. That's I know the uh, guest people. cam. Yeah. It's right. the guest cam of the cam. The cam of the cam. Shot of guest by cam. the cam. There's many. I have a cam. Well, you have a camera there. I have a camera there. You have a camera there. We have another camera there. We have all these cameras here. We got a backup camera to the other cameras that are there too. Because that's what we have to. That's what we have to do now because we're in yeah. the future. And later I'm going to be taking it on my right. cell phone as well. We're so. in the future where you shoot the shooting of the shooting the of the shoot. shoot. So thank you for being the first guest. Th thank you for having me. Jat I'm Show. excited the to be here. The reason you are the first guest of the Jat Show is not because you're the only one that took my calls, but because you are, and I mean this sincerely, one of my dearest friends and one of the, the, the dearest people in the world to me. I just, I, I think the world of you. And I am so, it's perfect to have you as the first guest. Thank you, buddy. I hope that I'm interesting enough. I hope that this is successful. I hope I do well for you. You know also why? The other reason is you really were kind of the inspiration for me to start doing all this kind of vlogging and stuff. We'll get to that. But first, let's do the basics. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is ask you some questions, just succinct, quick little answers. Okay. Okay, so uh, uh, here we go. Basics question yes. number one. Your name is? My name's Tom Wilson. Very good. You're right. Uh, your eyes are? My eyes are blue. That's good. Uh, oh, it's a little trickier from here. Tacos or pizza? Pizza. Mm. Not, not tricky at all. Blue or purple? Pizza blue or purple? Um, I would think blue. Yeah. with a tinge of red in it, making it ever so slightly purple. You wouldn't think it's purple. You would think that's a rich blue. <laughs> ah, but because I know my colors. You do. Blue, I think. That was I much, love purple. That was very complex. That and was, you still yeah. no real answer, which is great. Uh, number five, Mozart or Beethoven? Yeah. Those are excellent composers, both of them. They are. What do you um, think? This is so people get to know Tom. If you had one piece to hear, yeah. it would probably be Beethoven yeah. because so many of them are such uh, seminal pieces of music. Okay. Because Mozart, uh, Tom Hulse was great at, as Mozart in that Amadeus thing. But uh, Gary but he, Oldman as Beethoven. There you Gary go. Gary Oldman as Beethoven. So, okay, uh, Monet or Picasso? See, these are, these are crafted just for you. Monet, definitely Monet. Monet, yeah, me too. I think Monet, yes. Monet was actually painting from his heart and yeah. his spirit. Yeah. And I think Picasso was did that sometimes. And a lot of times he was sort of servicing trying a to market. Find yeah. He was trying to, f he was looking for something. He was. You think if uh, in this day and age, Monet would not have a YouTube channel, but Picasso would. Picasso definitely would have a YouTube yeah. channel. Yeah. Okay. He'd be shooting his own stuff. That's right. And say, Look at me. Yeah. I mean, he was the one joking about the signature on the check being more valuable than the amount of money that was on the check. <laughs> Sounds like my residuals. Um, okay. Uh, seven. Uh, do you have a favorite movie? This is more of kind of the mainstream question. I I like a lot of movies. Yeah. Um, for the effect that it had on me, and it's interesting. Yeah. Field of Dreams is one of my favorite movies. Aha. Uh -huh. Because it's a movie um, that in in the modern era, let's yeah. say, in the yeah. modern era, it's a movie where you don't know how it's going to end. Yeah. You don't know what the story was. I still don't know what it was. Uh, you, you don't. I well, you're not know. very bright, then, no. James. But, no. but now I must say, you know, you see a movie now, and you sort of know. You, you know, know everything that's yeah, going to so. happen. You know okay, the guy. So feel okay, so Okay, good. Uh, favorite book. I wasn't done talking about. Well, we're, you're, you know, these are just, you know. Yes, like, of course. And of you're course. just going. Uh, I just came. I mean, up it's with nice. Field of Dreams. My Dinner with Andre is also a very it favorite right. movie. Of that's mine. right. Now I'm um, going to do precisely what you would think I wouldn't do. No, I'm sorry. That's, that's him from The Princess really Bride. I know. Not from My Dinner with Andre. That was the whole thing. My favorite book. Boy, 
That's a very – well, See, I'm a reader. Are, I enjoy reading I very know. much. This is why I asked so you. So my favorite book um, – you know, as a person of faith, you would say the Bible, but hi, right. here's the thing, here's ah, the trick. Ah. The Bible is not a book. The Bible is a library. Oh, look at that. Full of books. I don't know if I've ever heard anybody put it like that. That's very well put. Okay, so. Um, so, uh, but my favorite book in, in from a popular standpoint, there's a, a writer named Leif Enger, E-N-G-E-R, that wrote a book called Peace Like a River, and I recommend it very highly. It's about a young boy uh, with asthma, and I had asthma when I was growing up. I was very sick, and it's yeah. one of the most accurate and moving portrayals of the relationship between a father and his son, and his sick oh son goodness. that I've read. So I found the book... Um, I found the book a wonderful yarn. I mean, an excellent story and a very, very moving experience to me. Wow. Wow. And I was going to have a cheap shot joke about my book, uh, which uh, Matt is holding up in the uh, control room there, uh, Jat 365. Sorry, but instead... you can <laughs> my favorite book is Jat 365 no. by James Arnold no. Taylor. Okay. Uh, hey, Okay. you want to make it the winning combination of book <laughs> and your life. Oh, please. Favorite song? Favorite song? My favorite song. You're really getting into stuff here, aren't you? <laughs> I mean, I know it's supposed to be like these a ding, are, ding, ding, ding. I know, it's the basics. kind of like an idea of who uh, Tom Wilson is all about. My favorite song nice. is uh, a song called Magnificat. Uh, yeah. uh, a, a man. A, By a, who? A friend of mine, a man named John Michael Talbot. Oh, I know that name. Wrote, uh, wrote a musical version uh -huh. of the, the, the prayer... Uh -huh. that Mary, the mother of Jesus, yep. prays when the angel tells her that she's going to have a child. Oh, that's awesome. And she says, you know, my soul uh, magnifies the Lord and my yeah. spirit exalts in God my Savior, that, those sorts of things. So it was a, a very beautiful and touching piece of music uh, to me, a great wow. song. And, you know, hey, man, I think I think of in the, in the kind of rock or whatever, I want to hold your hand is just such a perfect, perfect, kind of a song. perfect rock it's song. It's just yeah. yeah, you know what I mean by rock, rock and exactly. roll. Exactly, it's just a girl and a guy, yeah. and I want to hold your hand. Well, you know, oh, not me. And when I touch you, I feel happy. Yeah, inside. So you it know? says everything. It says everything. And they've been still trying now, uh, in this day and age, to get that. All they need to do is just go back and listen to the two, Well, two, you know, and she loves you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You yeah. like her. Guess guess what? She, she loves, loves you. you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it was it was <laughs> I was very very young there, of course. Sure. But that that was the first explosion. You went, "Wow, this is it." Of that. I mean, there were there were Elvis and everything for the 50s, but that kind of she she loves you. Yeah. And everyone yeah. goes crazy. Don't sing too much. We'll have to pay rights. Sorry. I meant yes. She <laughs> likes you. Right. Yes, right. Yes, right. Yes. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. Um, was that okay? Answer that was good. That? that was Here's the last question. Uh, this one's uh, this one's a little easier. A fisherman has five fishes. Each has a different weight. A weighs twice as much as B. B weighs four and a half times as much as C. C weighs half as much as D. D weighs half as much as E. E weighs less than A but more than C. Which is the lightest? Um, do you just have? Do you have a pencil? Sure. We got something here. Hey, look, maybe we, we always keep something handy here. You need to like figure that out. Okay. Take your time. It's okay. It's not like we're a YouTube show that tries to do things quick. <clears throat> I'm going to get C. If I if I heard it correctly, C. That's correct. Wow, Tom Wilson, the basics. You got uh, you got ten out of ten. Thank you. Well, the you first ones were easy, <laughs> so I got my name right okay, and my so eye color. That's that's awesome. Let's go back to uh, 2002. Do you remember what happened in 2002? Um, I many uh, things. I really you don't. and I met. Oh, we met, and you know the the year. I know the year. I know wow. the project. Do you remember the first thing we worked on? I don't remember the first thing we worked it was, on. It uh, was it was a Disney project called Atlantis, uh, and it was based off of the movie Atlantis: Lost Empire. And they were making a series. Uh huh. And the series, the movie didn't do as well as they hoped, so uh -huh. they they canned the series before it ever even went. And we had recorded 18 episodes. They took three of those episodes and turned them into a direct-to-DVD release okay. called Atlantis Milo's Return. And Milo's I Milo. Return, yes. And you were Carnaby. And you were this uh, kind of this guy that was uh, kind of a shyster. I play a lot of that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, you and play these guys. That's right. I'm Milo. I'm on an adventure. Oh, let's see. Who's... 
I'm trying to be Milo. What are you doing? You know, I do that guy. Are you done? I think I'm done. <laughs> I mean, I don't do this guy you professionally very, like you. You were very kind to me. And, uh, and we hit it off. And we have been friends ever since. Yes, we have. And, uh, and then I discovered your artwork, which yeah. we'll, we'll talk about. But um, I discovered you as a stand-up. So, and, and also, you were a band geek. I was a band geek. I was a band geek, yes. And I that was part of your act. Yep. And you came out with a tuba. I, I played the tuba on The Tonight Show. That's yeah, just so I great. played the tuba in my act for about, about 10 years. There's a, there's a prop that you don't want to be I carried, around. for 10 years, I carried a big sousaphone yeah. in a hard case yeah. uh, a, a, and a guitar <laughs> and a suitcase and a briefcase. But you weren't a prop comic. I was not a prop comic. No. I just had two instruments <laughs> because I played music. I sang songs. I played the tuba. I did various things. And, and yeah. it, was, it was crazy, though. But, I, and dare I say, it, it inspired me when I started doing stand-up when I was uh, 16 years old is when I first got on stage to do stand-up. I came out with my saxophone. Mm -hmm. And I never actually played it. I used it as a crutch. And, I would, and then I would go back. It's a you know, great, and it was, just, and it was you know, a prop. It was, you right. Know, but I was Why inspired not? by. Uh, That's by what, what helped you get on stage. Yeah. Right? I, I, so I was. The tuba very helped me get you. on stage. I mean, you're starting to think about what would I do if yeah. I were being funny? Mm -hmm. Not I must be Steve, another Steve Martin or right. another Robert St Klein or right. another David. St no. <clears throat> what would I do yeah. if I was being on stage and making a show, writing things? Exactly. I would talk, but I would also sing. Yeah. I can play the tuba, so I would also do that because I, I can, and it would be fun to do that. It's not fun to carry it through an airport, <laughs> but it's fun to play it on stage and use it as a part of your show. And you know, the thing about uh, your stand-up career, your life, there's so many things that can be answered by one thing, and this is something where we actually had a connection where I got to uh, be a part of. It's your book, The Masked Man. Mm -hmm. You wrote a book that is an autobiography, it is a, what do you call it? It's a... Uh, it's a, a memoir and fantasy of Yes, Hollywood. that's what I like is that you say a memoir and fantasy. If you want to know about Tom Wilson, if you want to know about his life and his story, this book is the best way because it covers so much. All the... You have some amazing stories, especially within your life as a stand-up. You cover a lot of that. Mm -hmm. uh, you were one of the last people to see John Belushi alive. Uh, I was. Um, I was. You uh, you got into uh, nearly fisticuffs with uh, Sam Kinison. I did. Uh, I did. You um, let's. I mean, it, it was a crazy time. It was a very very crazy time for yeah. a very young man. Yeah. Who had had the experiences that I had had in my life. Yeah. And then uh, had an unusual skill set. Yeah. You know, we 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 go through our teenage years, and we're in high school, and I'm in plays, and I'm playing music, yeah. and I'm doing art, th you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And as everyone else is kind of going to school then and saying, well, it's time to get an office and right. read the newspaper, and I wasn't fitting in with that. No. So you end up going on a different path. My path led me to uh, led me to Hollywood, to the Sunset Strip. So when I was 21 years old, um, being a comedian at the Comedy Store on the Sunset Strip with Richard Pryor and Robin Williams. And, and your roommates were Yakov Smirnoff and Andrew Dice Clay. I was a roommate with <laughs> Andrew, yeah, Andrew Dice Clay and Yakov Smirnoff from Russia. And Tom Wilson. Yeah, everyone, even then, <laughs> then people were saying, this is a situation comedy. I mean, you're actually <laughs> living in a TV show. I moved into the house and Yakov, welcome to the house. Listen, come to my room for one moment, one moment. He was, yeah, Yakov, what would you like? He goes, I'm, I'm doing a Merv Griffin show. Uh, you know, it was a talk show at sure, the time. Yeah, and Griffin. he was going to be a comedian, but also do the panel. Oh. So, Tom, you act like Merv Griffin, ask me questions, <laughs> and I answer you. I tried to make it funny. We see. <laughs> so that was the first thing. Did like, you do a lot of, ooh. Yes. Yeah, it's, so, Yakov. <laughs> so, honestly, I really hope that people would pick up the book and learn more about your, your life and your story. because I it worked a lot on it, and, and I think it's good. I'm proud of it. Uh, well, you should be. Uh, the other thing you should be very proud of is your art. Um, when did you start painting? When did you know you had a knack for painting? I never had a knack for painting. Uh, <laughs> full I, name. I never, I didn't. I'm like everybody, really. I drew stick figures yeah. and I was very bad at it. And even when I was an adult in my early 20s and buying paints and thinking, I'm going to paint. And then you make some painting of a duck that looks like a second grader <laughs> made it. Is. So I just decided I'm going to study painting 
And it's going to be okay that I'm the worst one in the class. <laughs> the interesting thing to me was once the teacher figures out mm -hmm. that you're not going to quit, they actually start teaching you. Oh, that's I great. I mean, really, really teaching, teaching you. you. And then you really, really coming up. Involved. And it takes a long time. Yeah. You know, especially when you're like me, not particularly gifted at it. Oh, well. but it was it was just I'm telling you, it was mileage. And is it something that you do to relax? Still, I love it. Can you st still? Go, I love it. Okay, it's one of the very few things. Music, yeah. and painting are two of the things where you forget the time. Yeah, where I'm you the same. sit down I, I love the paint. and you paint a little bit, and then it's two hours later. Yeah, and it's it's so relaxing. And again, you're an inspiration to me. I'm just trying to be you, but someday I'll I'll get to your height. I think you Maybe will. Not. I don't think so. Those think are some gonna tall shoes. So, so, so you're vlogging. You're here on YouTube. This is a YouTube show. This is, yeah. a, you know, but again, I mentioned you inspired me. You're the first one that showed me like Casey Neistat and, and showed me, look what this guy is doing. And, and, and I was looking at your vlogs and I thought, this is great. And we kind of like started talking about all these things and cameras together and stuff. I certainly vlog when I can. I'm not as prolific as you are, but I don't like communicating by 140 characters, yeah. just because in 140 characters, you feel, I certainly do as a comedian, you feel like you have to be a little snide yeah. or a little, there has to be a joke in there. And most of the jokes that you can do in 140 characters, social media has gotten briefer and briefer yes. and briefer and briefer. There's new twit. It's not even Twitter. Exactly. And it's, it's five characters. So are we actually sharing anything with each other? No. Or are we trying to spin something so quickly yeah. that the joke isn't particularly good yeah. and it has to have a little sneer at it or a little... A little uh, everything is a little... A, yeah. Everything is a little downcast to me. Just yeah, to me, me too. No, so, me too. Uh, so I don't find them particularly uh, uh, helpful or... or it doesn't enhance my life. Of course, I'm, going, I'm doing a show here. I'm doing a show there. People on the internet don't want friends. They want mirrors. Yeah. You know, you must mirror the person exactly. Yeah. They say something and you say, absolutely, James. I com yeah. completely agree with you 100%. And if you disagree, if you disagree, if you say, unfriended, I unfollowed. agree with you, as people have disagreed sure. throughout the history, history of man. Yes. I agree with you 81%, James. And there are a couple things. And Not in this so age, much. it's like, yeah. what are you talking about? <laughs> So, uh, long story to come to vlogging. Vlogging is a way to speak in sentences, to give people a little view yeah. of an unusual life, yeah. of something that's interesting. Unique, that, fun, something they don't get to experience all exactly. the time. Exactly. And, they get to, and I realize that not a lot of people will watch it. Some, some have done. Some have done millions of, of views. Yeah. Some have done in the many thousands, but some not, not very much. Well, but that's okay. It's yeah. like, uh, what in social media, quote unquote, what am I going to put out there? Yeah. Generally, I hope I give you a relatively accurate view of myself, yep. my life, the things I do, yep. not just a snarky comment about the new Batman movie. <laughs> You know? Although there's lots of there's a lot of that there's yeah, a no, lot of it, that. it really is well that's it's great and again it did inspire me did that make sense it made total my sense. long long thing about <laughs> vlogging and my breaking down social media of course it did it's a Jat Show viral video moment hey here at the Jat Show we have um well absolutely no clue as to what it takes to make a viral video but we're going to recreate or reimagine a classic viral video right here, right now with our special guest, Tom Wilson. Check it out. It's a recreation of Ninja Cat.
Isn't that great? Now it'll become viral and millions and millions of people will watch Tom Wilson as the ninja cat and the, it's not gonna happen, I know, I know. But we tried, we tried. <sighs> viral video moment, hope you enjoyed. I do wanna talk about your career as an actor. Yeah. Um, and of course we cannot talk about that without talking about one very, very special thing. And that would be- The facts of life. Freaks and geeks. Uh, oh, freaks and geeks. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> Freaks and Geeks, <laughs> and you played Coach Ben Fredericks. Freaks and Geeks was one of the great experiences of my career. I, I loved it. Uh, Judd Apatow, Paul Feig, who've now, of course, their household names are huge. Yeah. yeah. But um, it was a show about human beings. Yeah. And the scripts reflected how human beings actually live. Yeah. Freaks and Geeks is an interesting, uh, I mean, interesting in the history of showbiz because yeah. it's the first show that's actually hit just as a dvd yeah because nobody watched it when it was on television it's, and i'll be honest i didn't watch it uh until it was on already and then mm -hmm. it wasn't back then where you could kind of catch up so i came in in the middle right. when it was on and going man i want to see more of this and then it gets canceled which is one of the biggest travesties to this day i mean yeah, that was one of my showbiz things where they say, uh, Tom, well, kind of good news and bad news. The good news, well, we, we really uh, love your character in the show. You're going to be a show regular. You're going to marry Bill's mom. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be, you're going to be way more. We actually want to, uh, you to uh, direct a couple of episodes yeah, no, because we've yeah. been talking about that. And uh, we're canceled. So it was just, it was just one of those things. But I, I've been a part of, of a number of projects like that. Yeah that I'm really proud of, that yeah. I'm really happy with, because that's that's why I came here. Not that I expect Hollywood to always provide you with fascinating, provocative work. It doesn't. It doesn't. But a show like Freaks and Geeks, I'm really proud of. I'm proud yeah. of my work in it. I'm proud be. of the things that we did in the show. I'm proud of Zack Stone is going to be famous, a show I did with Bo Burnham. Yeah, I'm that's a great show. Now, people was, can see that somewhere, I'm sure. It's right? on, I don't know if it's on Netflix. It's You can get a DVD of that. Those kinds of things are almost, they're really, a, you know, whatever. They're behind the eight ball. Those, and they're, but there are those wonderful moments in time, too, where you hope that you actually get to kind of take it in because it, they are so special. You know, these kind of great. They things. are. Yeah. You actually get to play a human being yeah. in a script that reflects that. And Freaks and Geeks, whenever, when, when they gave a kid nuts, yeah. he was allergic to nuts as a prank, he gets really sick. Yeah. And they have like to think the about that, yeah. and they have to apologize. And it's like goes the storyline goes all the way through. It does. It's not just the joke, and then we cut to yeah. you know the star. And I believe Freaks and Geeks is on Netflix right now. People can uh, watch it there, or you can uh, get the DVDs. I think they should and uh, and watch yeah, it if they have not. If you haven't seen Freaks and Geeks, honestly, do yourself a favor. You got to check it out. Um, I want to go through a couple other uh, things. Pig Goat Banana Cricket. Pig Goat Banana Cricket, another show. You're banana. I am play. Look, Are my dream has come true. I always <laughs> wanted to play a psychotic banana in a cartoon. <laughs> I knew. And I knew that hey, about you. <laughs> it's come through. <laughs> and then uh, Troll Hunters. You're you're another coach. Troll Hunters. I am. I'm the gym teacher on Troll Hunters now. Yeah. Even did Freaks and Geeks have anything to do with I that? Think think? Did. Yeah. I think it did. I think it did. We do. Uh, you and I uh, work together on uh, DreamWorks Dr thing. Uh, dragons. Dragons. Right. As a bucket. Yep. Yeah. I'm Bucket. I'm Throck, as well as uh, I'm also Jay Rochelle's double. Uh, uh huh. So Anytime well, you're a lot of things in voiceover oh. because you work a lot in voiceover. Yeah. Um, and, of course, there's this huge franchise that we would be uh, remiss if we did not mention that we actually both have worked in, uh, and that's uh, Star Wars. Yes. So you that, thought I, I thought something. you were going to no. go there, and you'll go there eventually. <laughs> um, well, I worked in Star Wars, but really in v very limited capacities. Yeah. Very limited capacities. Uh, same with me. I'm I do a Star Trek. I'm in a Star Trek game. Are you really? so, Star Trek? So within the con fans. You're set. You're okay. You I, can go. I don't know. We've beat around the bush. There is another uh, another movie that, of course, three movies that you're, uh, you've you been involved in. Back to the Future. Yes. Here's the uh, thing. I think people are so enamored with these. Yeah. They love them. They mean something so much to them. And they don't realize sometimes, and I've dealt with this with Star Wars as well, where people don't realize that we don't experience it the same way they do. 
Like, which is not to say, and it's not that knocking. we right. Which is not to say that we experience it negatively. Exactly right. First of all, yeah, there is an idea that out in the world that I dislike or hate back to the future don't want to talk about it don't yeah. bring it up to him which is odd to me really because i've never said that no i don't think that my life has demonstrated it mm -mm. but i wrote a song in order to make it funny yes you know yeah i think it's a funny song it's got millions and millions of youtube hits yes but Oddly, from that song, I believe, people extrapolated that, oh, he hates it, don't don't bring oh, it up or whatever. Yeah. I, I can bring it up. I can, I can, I can bring it up, but I, it, at the same time, yeah. I can also bring up that it's always brought up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So I can make an observation from my life, and right. not that I hate it, because right. I like it, I'm proud of it, and all that stuff is good, yeah. but I think there is a lot of folklore around me yeah. that's actually inaccurate. Yes. That is a whole... Well, I'll tell I, you, don't, I didn't come to stuff, I didn't come to this thing or that thing, but no. A, I'm not invited, yeah. and B, <laughs> I have to work because I'm not a rich guy. I'm not the movie star. Right. I have to, you know, I have to be in Los Angeles, like working, or yeah. I'm in Des Moines, Iowa, doing a comedy show, exactly. or I'm doing uh, voiceovers on Dragons, whatever. Right. So I'm unable to do it. You're a working. And then guy. I get these. Why do you hate us? Why do you hate the fan? I, I, I was. I, I had a Never. job. Yeah. <laughs> it's just trying to live. You know, you and Mark Hamill are good friends. Yeah. And and you actually did it, your podcast right. uh, with him. I didn't talk to him a lot about Star Wars. Yeah. But I wanted to ask him his take on having something very unusual happen to you as a person. This is exactly where I was hoping we would go with it because I what I so love and respect about you and your career and what you've done with it is that right there you just are able to look at this and that's what you're doing with your art now and that's we could talk about that as look at what's happened look at this experience in my life this mm -hmm. back to the future thing created this experience in my life does that make sense and can you absolutely on that? um when when back to the future was not only a huge mega hit mm -hmm. but was becoming a you know, a, a pop cultural tsunami, <laughs> bigger than anyone really could have predicted. Yes. Uh, when that is happening in your life, yeah. and you are thinking, I'm gonna have to have a manner in which I deal with this. Yeah. I'm going to have to have an approach. Mm -hmm. hmm. Look, let me look around at people that I know that this has happened to, mm -hmm. you know? Most of them, James, have dealt with it, in my opinion, in not the healthiest of ways. With, at with, bitterness mm. or anger, sure. which has led to anything, to, to alcohol, to drugs, yeah. and to really a, a dissolution of their, of their artistry, of, what the, of who they came to be, you know, right. to share a part of their heart with people. Yep. So my approach was, let me just come at it mm -hmm. from different angles yeah. and not... Just be the guy with all due respect to everyone. Yeah. Not just be the guy who comes and waves to everyone. Yeah. And who you take your picture and I sign your thing and I do that. But it's not the whole thing. No, I think so many people too, uh, you know, again, we both do these cons quite a bit and people are infatuated with it. But right now we're in a time period very specific, like you talk about the 140 characters where people just go, I just want his signature. I just want this and I just want that because I'm a collector. And I right. get that and I have respect for that because I'm a collector. But it's when people don't understand that, no, there's there's a heart, there's a human, there's there's right. flesh and bone there. This can, this, this will be um, taken in by people mm -hmm. in very different ways yeah. and make them either angry or understand it or, or whatever they like. But that has to be okay with me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That yeah. I have to live my life. And I am a person. Yeah. I'm a human being. I'm not simply the end of a treasure hunt. <laughs> That's a great way of putting it. You know? Wow, that is, yeah. And if you would like to meet me or see me as a person, yeah. I'm very happy to meet everyone. One of the nicest people ever. We go out to eat uh, often, you and I, and everybody, you know, we're sitting at a table. People, right. 
people recognize you. You know, they, and yes, and, and you're uh, always and I'm the nothing guy but lovely and lunch, gracious. You'll take you know? pictures right. with people. You, I, yeah. Right. But if if you just uh, like I must. You know, I must jump through your hoops yeah. because in your treasure hunt, I must do this, that, yeah. say this on a video, <laughs> yeah. sign these 17 things. Yeah. Um, it's not that I don't, you know, like good luck to you, but that's not what I'm doing on the earth. Yeah. I'm here to meet people. Yeah, interact. To, 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 to be friendly with them, yeah. even to love people. Well, I think this is one of the great things. Um, did that make sense? Or yes, did I come it did. Off of a... you, no, I, and I, I want people to understand it, that there's, you know, because there's not just yourself, there's so many of us, we go to these cons now, and you you know, all these wonderful people. Uh, Dean Kane is another person. Comes Dean's a it. wonderful guy. Great guy. Great guy. And we're all there because we're happy to meet our fans. We, we really are. And there's a side of it that is such a business. Yes. And you will take the time to say, hey, can I get a few seconds with these people to experience that? And I, I respect actually, that. I did that. Yeah. I did that because the photos were, they were just literally going too fast. Yeah. You're coming in, take a picture. Boom, oh, yeah. tap, 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 sign okay. a tip. Take a picture, yeah. And I said, like, the, the, the reason that I'm here, of, co of course, we, we're doing business, everyone yeah, is, and you have making things. making a living at it, what, yeah. But I would like to be able to say hello to a person. <laughs> yeah. To hear their name and not just go, right, right whatever, you know, I just yeah. what, and, and actually hear it. Is it John? Hello, John. How yeah. are, you, are you having a good time? Don't look at Mr. Wilson. Don't Whatever talk to Mr. That Wilson. Thing. Just, you know, so, like so I'm trying. It is not a perfect science, you know? Yeah. I don't think anyone has figured out the way to do it perfectly, to meet a, a, a lot of people and have them feel like they actually met a person. Well, I think you're doing a great job at it. I really do. And, and you've been starting to do some more cons and people can see you out there. And so I mean, this coming I'm year, trying I'm sure because people, people were like, why do you hate us? <laughs> that was the, inter you know, in emails, why do you hate us? What's the matter? I, I, I don't. Here's the thing. Uh, the Masked Man, the book, The Masked Man, is going to give you more stories about Back to the Future than you, you've ever really known from this perspective. This is Tom Wilson's perspective. These stories you can't find anywhere else because they're your stories. And that's what also puts that personal touch on it. But that's what I thought was so wonderful. When we were recording it, I thought, this is so great hearing these. I mean, from dealing with Eric Stoltz to staying in character all day with, with Crispin <laughs> to uh, just the whole aspect of dealing with a franchise that is bigger than the world and how you dealt with it. I, I, that's why I just recommend people pick up your book. Mm -hmm. at, because Absolutely. And with me, and look, I, I understand it, though it's, it, it does present difficulties yeah. because I'm the bad guy, because I'm physically large. Yeah. Uh, you know, most of my interchanges with people are very friendly and absolutely wonderful. Yeah. But I'm sure everyone can imagine, because everyone knows that guy. Yeah. The guy that wants to put me in a headlock yeah. or wrestle around with me or, I mean, people punch me. A guy, a guy literally, Just, I mean, I don't mean, I don't mean like, I like, mean punched me like in the side. Oh. Like in order to get, you know, because he wanted that reaction yeah. in order, like some friend of his has a GoPro something. Yeah. So something. So. There are a ah. lot of challenges in that way. And I'm not saying, you know, I'm sure no. that, that Mark Hamill or those people well, have no, them. But they're, but they're that not. Not guy, in the same way. That, there are plenty of those guys. Mm -hmm. And I've dealt with them, you know, in comedy clubs. And I've dealt with them at, at con and I've dealt with them in a lot of places. That's, and yeah. I just, you know, you can imagine. Uh, you just. Well, again, it's very different. You know, I've, I've Obi-Wan Kenobi, people don't come up and punch Obi-Wan Kenobi. Right. But. You're associated with this character that is the polar opposite of you, which is kind of this, kind of this bully kind of guy. So people right. figure they can then come up and, and speak that language with you when it's like that's that's a character. I, play. I hear you say that. I'm Tom. Yeah. <laughs> I, movies are pretend. <laughs> movies are pretend. Cars don't fly. Time so. <laughs> travel doesn't exist. When tiny little guys punch me in the face, I don't get knocked unconscious. <laughs> when I take a picture with a group of people. I somewhat stand on my toes a little bit. Yeah. And if people see that, they say, oh, you're trying to be taller than us. And I'm like, well, first of all, I'm taller than everybody. <laughs> yeah. But secondly, I'm doing that because everyone wants to wrestle me around. Yeah. They grab me and say, like, I'm going to get on his shoulder. Oh. And if I start to go down, I mean, I've, tr I've tripped and taken out like four people. 
So it's sort of like uh, it's kind of like a, a, a an athletic event. Yes. You know, because people are grabbing and stuff it's and you're just very... trying to literally stay in balance to 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 take a picture with people. Well, that's why I, wa I did want to talk about it, because it is a very different experience that you have than I have, that Mark has, that Dean Cain has, you know, because of... You're all good looking. The character... No, come on, and look at the head of hair you got. My gosh, if I had that. Um, you played a character that was associated differently, and so people associate it differently. So people when people, associate, when you see yes. Tom Wilson at a con... He's a great, just come on. I under, uh, Again, you I understand I the impulse, it, and maybe I would do it. But And I'm not saying, oh, woe is me, but I'm saying no. through my life, yeah. my entire adult life, yeah. when I meet someone at a barbecue, yeah. they say, I hate you. <laughs> now, it's <laughs> just interesting, but, you know, yeah. but to do that, it's just, you know, I don't, honestly, at first, I don't know even how to react to that, you know, like. <laughs> Hello, I'm Tom. I hate you. Oh. Okay, but you know, that's that's a fake. Th it's pretend. Like we, yeah. at the end of me being mean to Marty, we have snacks. They have red vines and stuff. And we just, <laughs> like, it's not a real thing. But I hate you. Why yeah. do I hate you so much? I hate you. Okay, uh, that's a thing that's with you that nice. you're going to have yeah. to deal with because I'm going to go to hot dog. <laughs> I don't know. Well, yeah. Well, thank you for talking about it. Hey, do you mind if we take some uh, questions I'd be from happy to. Uh, people on social media? I'd be media? happy to. All right. It's social media madness. Well, so I asked people on social media uh, in 140 characters to, yep. uh, if they had a question, they uh, hashtag chat show and uh, ask Tom Wilson a question. We had a lot of people bring in some uh, a questions. A lot of people. <laughs> I'm not sure that anyone's really that interested we in We had me. a few. We had I a few. I think the people right now, they're actually, they're napping. <laughs> they're just, uh, so you want to take a look at some of these yes. questions? You'll answer some of them. Okay, I'd, be the I'd be and, happy uh, to. And let's roll one of the questions, guys. Okay, James, I have a question for Tom. What was his favorite memorable childhood toy? Favorite memorable t childhood toy? That's a great question. That was from Christopher Hill asked that question. Wow. I love toys. Yeah, you still love toys. You painted a lot of toys. I painted a lot of toys. Um, I, uh, the thing that I got at Christmas that I couldn't believe how lucky I was <laughs> was the Johnny 7 action helmet. Did you paint you, one of those? I did. I did. It had yeah. like ear flaps yes. and a helmet, and you rode your bike on it. See, because I know from your painting. it had like a red light on it. Yeah. And it, like it made, you, you could do, like it had for whatever it was, 1965. Yeah. But you could talk into it, and there was like a speaker oh, on it. Hey, right. Yeah. And there were lights on it and everything. I'm Johnny Seven, look and out. Exactly. So that was that. that I took. Oh. And of course, you know, it broke in three days. And everything. But, <laughs> but then, but, but the, you know, the king of all toys for yes. a boy yeah. are Hot Wheel cars. Yeah. With the orange track. Yep. The purple, uh, the purple connectors of the orange track. Yep. You do it with your brother or what in, in the yeah. room, Zoom. off the bookcase yep. to down loop around. the loop and then down into the hallway. I wonder if kids still have that experience. If you do it successfully, that's the best thing that could ever happen <laughs> in life. The car actually was zzz, zzz, wow. and then out into the hallway yeah. and life was good. Then at the end, you take apart the track and you beat your brother <laughs> with a piece of Hot Wheel track. Wow. So See, that I was, was the youngest, so I didn't have you were, that experience. Oh, so you got yeah, beaten, I got beaten with you the, got track. Beaten with yeah. the track. Yeah. Sorry. Man, that was great. Well, uh, thanks to Christopher Hill for asking. Sure. Are you ready for another Hot one? Wheels, the king of toys. Okay, let's, let's run another one. Let's take a look. Hey, Jack. Bill Russell, voice actor. We met at VO Mastery last year. Tom, I've got a question for you. What's the most embarrassing moment of your voice acting career? Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. I think Bill's had a little sauce. Quite a, quite a mustache for Bill. <laughs> the most embarrassing moment. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this show right now. You, it's actually this show. Um, can I tell if, on camera? Sure, sure. I was a guest star on an episode of Reba. <laughs> I shouldn't tell this. <laughs> you know, okay. I'm so, <laughs> See, um, I'm like the Reba. kinder, gentler host. I'll yeah. go, oh, well, if you don't want to tell it. No, I but, was, I was, I needed a sinus surgery. I'm an allergic guy. I have asthma and yeah. everything. And I needed a sinus surgery. Like that right I then. kept, I, that I kept putting off. Ah. I kept putting off. I kept putting off because of work. Because sure. Of yeah. So Reba, I'm rehearsing Reba for a half a week. It's fun to say Reba though. Reba. I'm rehearsing Reba for a half a week. Yeah. Then Reba, a concert comes up. 
where she has to go and do, she does a well, that's what she concert does. for a football she, stadium, yeah, eighty thousand tickets. She's Reba, Tom. So they say, Tom, listen, we're not going to do the episode right now. We're probably maybe going to do it in a couple weeks. Oof. Reba has a concert to do, but we're going to call you back and everything. I say, great, I'm going to call the doctor to see if we can do that surgery because I really have t- canceled it. Oh man, do the surgery. Oh boy, my my. Oh, no. Everything is stuffed, stuffed, oh, stuffed, boy. packed. I'm they scared say, already. They call. Listen, she's not doing the concert. We're going to, she's oh. going to do the show. Oh, no. <laughs> so, I, I can't. So, um, so, so I go take out all the stuff and everything. <laughs> oh, no. And you're swollen. I'm, I'm not swollen. I was oh, icing my face, icing my face, oh, my icing my word. face, icing my face. We have this thing where I'm trying to pick up Reba. So I take her hand like this. I say, listen, you and me. And <laughs> oh, no. I'm and I don't even, I can't describe it. I can't describe it, James. But something dribbles out of my nose and lands on her hand. <laughs> something that you don't want dribbling out of you your nose. You don't want to land on Reba. Land on Reba McIntyre's <laughs> hand. But it did. Oh, no. I give Reba great credit. Yeah. Cuz I have probably never been more humiliated in my life. Oh she man. She was a trooper. I had of course because I mean I had handkerchief, I had EPA funding from the federal government. Oh. I had everything. So uh, we cleaned that up and she was very <laughs> she was very gracious about it. <laughs> You're making me cry. Oh, she was very gosh. gracious about it. But let's put it this way: I didn't. Uh, you you didn't know, get I didn't back. get a date with Reba, uh, <laughs> like on the show. I mean, the character. I didn't get asked back on the show. You know. <laughs> well, I have an idea. Let's get that guy back. They just blew chunky, gross <laughs> stuff on my hand. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, that's great. So that's oh yeah, my gosh, that was, that was pretty. Uh, good. <laughs> Wow. You ready for another question? Sure. All right. Let's take a look. Hey, Mr. Taylor. Hey, Mr. Wilson. This is Eric Cameron. I just wanted to know, what was your favorite part about playing Biff Tannen in the Back to the Future trilogy? Um, he's one of the most iconic villains and, and, and bullies in cinema history. So I just wanted to know, what was your favorite part about playing such an iconic character? Okay, Eric Cameron. Thanks, this, Eric. He's Absolutely. He's a really nice, nice young the man. The up-and-coming Eric and so, Cameron. And uh, so, uh, favorite part of playing Biff? You know, again, we talk about all the kind of the stuff about it, but what, what was your favorite part? Um... I'm from Philadelphia. Yeah. Uh, these movies were made at a time when increasingly a Western, a big budget Western, just wouldn't be made. No. Okay? So for a kid from Philadelphia to be able to learn how to ride a horse, yeah, I learned how to quick draw and shoot a six gun. So to do those sorts of things sure. was the dream of a kid who wanted to be in the movies or yeah. something to be you know i mean biff had its uh it was a lot of work yeah it was a lot again of work. And, and let me let me drop in for a second here this was before it was common like i do it here where i have like multiples of me and i'm talking to me this was relatively new technology and you were yes. doing it all on your own there were days where you're just having conversations with right. yourself 18 to 20 hour days were very very common a very, very hard work throughout the day, uh, satisfying work certainly. Sure. But it was uh, it was difficult to do. Yeah. Um, but to to do that when you get to play cowboys, yeah, that was so much fun to great. learn horseback riding. We shot yeah. it up near Yosemite National Park, Is that up where in you the did Sierra, okay. yeah, I the foothills of the Sierra Mountains. Yeah. And they would because I was learning to ride. They would say, anytime you want the horse out, Tom, just tell us. So every day at lunch, lunch would be an hour, I would go out with the stuntmen and just ride horses. Get on a horse. You know, I would snack a bit during the filming, but I wouldn't sit down and have lunch per se. They would have the horse saddled, and that's an hour for lunch, everybody. Always the same horse? Uh, We changed horses to Jesse. Diablo. They put me on Diablo. They wanted a very black horse horse yeah and the horse's name literally was Diablo and it was a difficult horse yeah. the horse horses um, they know 
if you're uh, by the time yeah. the filming had started i was a reasonably good rider right but i wasn't good enough for a horse like that that was smart enough to actually go into fences and try to knock me off wow. to actually try to just messing with you mess with you mess with it because it's a movie you have yeah. to kind of tell the horse okay go this way stop now yeah and the horse has to go and stop and I mean, you have literally, to keep acting and you've got all this stuff going on right yeah so so jesse was a far more predictable horse than diablo diablo would have looked like look at that black horse and did they look the same then they did, did they, not look the same so did they jesse dress jesse to no look, they did no, not color okay. jesse right. so in the film are we going to see two different horses then that you're on you can see no like if you, we, you'll see you'll see uh you'll see jesse Okay. Maybe doubt, maybe, no, maybe another brown horse, maybe low ball on some of the stunts. Okay. There were, there were three, I loved low ball. Low ball would do anything. Really? Yeah. Low ball was just, I wanted to ride that, but they had, low ball was, I had special jobs or something, sure. you know? Yeah. So I rode Jesse was fine. And I rode Jesse all, all up and down. They would actually um, try to make the horse a little bit tired yeah. so that in the morning, you know, the horse is just, I'm ready to go. Yeah. Well, we're in a movie scene. You know, yeah. you're just walking up and then stopping. <laughs> the horse tried to throw me really? in the scene where um, where I have him drag, where I'm dragging yeah. Marty behind the horse. Right. I have this, uh, they call it a dally on, on the horn of the saddle. And I'm literally, you know, like uh, well, cantering, sort of a light sure. gallop. Uh, with the with dragon, well, the horse didn't like that at all. Wow, the horse was very nervous. So, do you think the horse knew what was going the on? The horse knew. I, that, I, I like, was hey, not doing not it with cool. a person. I was doing it with a big, like hundred pound. Oh, like a sack? sack. Oh, okay. Uh, I did a couple with Charlie, the stunt, the stunt double. Okay. That were wide shots, but I did it with a big burlap sack to have my close up. Yeah. Uh, as the truck is uh, the truck is in front of me, in front of you, and sure. I'm riding the horse yeah. with the with the line behind. The horse didn't like the the rope around its feet at all. Wow! So it uh, yeah, at the end of one of the shots, the horse really tried to buck me off. Wow! I mean, li you know, like bucking. Bronco. And do you then is the uh, is the relationship with the horse uh, different after that? You know what I mean? Like you getting back on as it go, hey. I don't know if I trust this guy now. Uh, the horse is okay. Horses they're, they're, listen. Yeah. The cowboys. Uh, they're not abusive to the horses, right. but they also don't say, you're a sweet, sweet. <laughs> you know, they don't bring them Rub carrots. Their tummy. Yeah, yeah. The horse gets the impression with the cowboy that you're here to do work. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, you know, you get fed. In the morning, you get fed. And then you come out and you do what I say. Yeah. And then we go home. That's how it works. And so you were that cowboy. So I was that cowboy. The horse was being a little yeah. iffy. They said, we're going to put spurs on you. I said, Jeez, I mean, I know you, but I don't want to spur. They said, no, 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 no. If the horse hears the spurs, the horse knows like, okay, no more fooling around. Like a dog or something. Yeah. And he went, listen, listen <laughs> now. I'm not fooling around. Right. I put the spurs on just to have them on. And the horse is like, okay, I get it. Whatever you want. Wow. Wow. That's that's awesome. Uh, and of course, we're talking about Back to the Future 3, which Three. was. Uh, I did. If I, may, if I may cut yeah. in, because yeah, I please. was thrown no, no. off a ladder. That's the only throne I was. Uh, in the third, uh, in the third movie, you made two and three at the same time, which was not simultaneously, but consecutively. Consecutively, yes. We I, finished I mean, which two, which had never been went, done. Right, never been done. We went into three, yeah. and I just wanted to my, the end of my horse. Being I'm sorry, off yeah. Horse. Please go ahead. I was never bucked off a horse. But that's your camera right there. You tell. I me. was never bucked off a horse. I stayed on. That's why I got a belt buckle out of it. But <laughs> when they're up very close, a very yeah. close close up, and we're going into the dance. Yep. Uh, the horse. You know the horse will will shift just a couple of inches here and there, so when the camera's close, they don't want this. Yeah, they just want this. So they put a ladder there, uh -huh. and I got to the top and I sat on an A-frame ladder <laughs> so that I would be that high up. Yeah, and uh, you know uh, we're going into the dance. Yeah, so I forget the line, but I'm so you know I'll, I'll see you in there, Marshall. <laughs> and I just move the the ladder like that. And I go, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> and the ladder. Oh no! Died, went down. Oh man! Oh, I didn't know that story. That's great. Yeah. Wow! Wow! All right. Well, thank you for uh, talking about that. You got time for? Uh, I do. I let's, do. Let's whatever, take another one. What do we got? Hey Tom, this is John Mundelli, and I've got a question that I'm curious about. The Back to the Future video game. I know originally another actor played Biff. 
However, you did the voice in the special edition re-release later on. I'm just curious, did you have to come in and actually match the lip sync of the original, like an ADR session, or did you get to come in and just lay down a cold new track and they redid the animation to match your new performance? Anyway, thanks so much. Cheers. That's a great question because, Thanks, uh, you know, there's a, uh, so the Back to the Future video games by Telltale, they did a great job with those games, a lot of fun. Again, I got to play Emmett Brown in that. You came in for the special edition of the games and, and reprised the role as, as Biff. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, how did you do it when you did that? I thought that it would be, as John said, I thought that I would get to create vocally yeah. what I would have done as the character. And right. What the way oh boy. I, see where I this is going. would do it. Yes. And it it literally, it took a half an hour for them to communicate this to me because I guess I, I, I was so incredulous. They were saying, no, 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 no. You're not sort of acting this. You're not creating it. You're sort of lip syncing the timing of the actor we had do it before. So you are indeed just redubbing what he did in the same inflection. It has to match because it's already yeah. been animated. We're not going to change it out. And yeah. Yeah. That's, I've to had to do that before. To be perfectly honest, yeah. it almost didn't happen. Really? But it, you know... It's yeah. very hard as an actor it's very to, hard. to do that. Especially when someone else did it. You know, it's hard to do it when you did it. Yeah. It's hard to, to do ADR, to, uh, to, to loop yourself. Yes. Doing it. But when it's a different guy doing different inflections of a way that you never would have approached it, it's, it's difficult. So yeah. it really was line by line matching timing. Lip flap, it's, right? It's, That's what they call yeah, it. Uh, lip flap, lip so, flap anyway. which is the when the when the animated thing goes ah uh, yeah. uh, uh, you have to sort of very match tricky. It. Well, yeah. well, all right. Hey, Tom Wilson, you have been a, a fantastic guest. We have a well, we have sponsors. Uh, well, we don't actually. Actually, we don't have any sponsors. I'm hoping that we'll have sponsors. Okay. Yeah. Once I get involved, a lot of sponsors are going to be calling in. So this is a script. All right. Go ahead and hit that background there, guys. Matt. There we go. Uh, the Jat Show is sponsored by, and then whenever the Jat Show gets a sponsor, this will be their ad. This is exciting. And you take, okay. Was just, yeah, okay. So I'm Tom, right? You're Tom. Okay. Okay. Hey, Tom. Hey, Jat. Hey, wow. What's that you're holding? Oh, see, so you're like, oh, like, go like, oh, this? Go like, go like, go like, what is that in the camera? Yeah, that's, oh, this? Yeah, hold your hand very steady, though, because I've got to put it in then. Oh, this is insert product name here. Isn't it great? Boy, I'll say insert product name here is super great. Yeah, whenever I want to insert adjective, I always reach for insert product name here because insert product name here always gives me the insert adjective I need to make my day insert adjective. Hey, would you like some insert product name here? I sure would, Tom, and I bet everyone out there would love to get insert product name here and, and can do so by doing by going to uh, sorry and can do so by going to insertproductname.com. They sure can. But hey, I hope they leave some insert product name here for me, fake laugh. No, fake laugh okay. and then we <laughs> for <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> can I shake my hand no, down? Now? <laughs> 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 what a great product. That's a great <laughs> Is it can I put my hand? Yeah. Was that I think that'll be great. I think people are gonna line up to sponsor this show now. Thanks. That was good. Hey, Tom Wilson. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Uh, anything you want to plug? No. Anywhere you, you're going, anything you want people to come to? Your uh, YouTube channel. Uh, we, we talked about your book, your art. You've done some wonderful art that is now, uh, you've just done a show for it and stuff. Is that going to be made available? A lot of people are asking about that. I, um, yes, I'm going to make prints of some of the art. Can, okay. You can go to TomWilsonUSA.com uh, to see that art, the Pop Fugue, which is based on my being seen as a pop cultural icon. Yeah. Oh, and I would say that people should watch on your YouTube channel. I'm going to link it here. 
the video that sets all of that up too is so beautifully uh, put together. So. Thanks. I am pop art. It's called uh, uh, YouTube from my channel. Subscribe on YouTube or yes, please do. But I, I don't, you know, have. I mean, I do a lot of shows and, and lots of things. Most of them things, we can't talk about. You, <laughs> yeah, most of them are secret. Yeah. So it's a you Tom Wilson USA almost everywhere Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff. That's fantastic. You have been a fantastic guest. Thanks so much, first James. Guest. Thank you I for having so me. I am so honored to have you here. Honestly, you are one of the, the dearest people in the world to me, and I thank you for uh, being here. And uh, I think the only way we really could end this is to have you run in front of a green screen. Okay. You ready to do I'm that? I'm ready. I'm this, ready to. And I have to give you credit. This was, this was really your joke anyways. Yeah. Years ago, we were yeah. talking about this, and you said, we just do a video of me running in front of a green screen. I said, that would... I'd like to, I think you should do it with every guest. That would go viral. Okay. Yeah. I, can I? I, yeah. can I have your permission? All right. Let's get you in front of that green screen. Hey, so here we are, Tom Wilson on the Jack Show green screen. What do you think, Tom? It's so green. <laughs> All right. You're ready to end the show. No pressure. Okay. This is the big show. All right. Everybody, thank you so much for watching The Jat Show. Uh, visit us at uh, jamesarnoldtaylor.com with your questions and comments and all of that. And if you want to check out more on Tom Wilson, then check out all the stuff that I'm putting right there. Oh, hey. Guys, what? Jat Show. Are we done?